Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry, a modernist novel published in 1947, unfolds in Cuanahuac, Mexico, in 1938, focusing on the consul, a former British diplomat grappling with alcohol addiction, on the day of his demise. The narrative cast comprises a select few, including the consul's half-brother, Hugh, his ex-wife, Yvonne, and his friend-turned-foe, Jacques Leruel. Malcolm Lowry, who had personal experience with addiction and spent time in Mexico, drew inspiration from his own life in crafting this novel. In the tradition of many modernist works, the book delves into themes like the erosion of trust in established institutions and the universe's indifference to human existence. Enjoying enduring popularity since its release, it has frequently earned recognition as one of the finest novels of the 20th century. Notably, it claimed the 11th spot on Modern Library's list of the top 100 English-language novels of the 20th century. The narrative commences on the Day of the Dead in 1939, in Cuanahuac, Mexico, where M. Jacques Leruel and Dr. Vigil reminisce about their departed friend, the Consul. Jeffrey Furman, known as the Consul, passed away exactly a year ago on this day, prompting contemplation on whether anyone could have prevented his tragic fate. Jacques, who is departing Mexico after a five-year sojourn, parts ways with Dr. Vigil to pack but soon becomes lost in introspection, reflecting on his childhood friendship with the consul. Taking refuge from a storm in a cantina, Jacques unexpectedly receives a book of Elizabethan plays that once belonged to the consul. Inside, he discovers a letter from the consul to his ex-wife, Yvonne. With both of them now deceased, Jacques decides to consign the letter to flames. The narrative then rewinds to the pivotal day of the consul's death in 1938, revealing the multifaceted perspectives of the consul, Yvonne, and the consul's half-brother, Hugh, as the story unfolds. The day begins with Yvonne's return to Quanahuac, with hopes of reuniting with the consul and helping him overcome his alcohol addiction, preparing for their journey to Canada. She discovers him in a cantina, already drinking early in the morning, and they make their way back to their former shared residence. During their walk, Yvonne has a profound emotional reaction upon encountering the striking rock formation known as La Despedida, an image etched in her memory. Upon their return home, the consul's maid offers them whiskey, but both Yvonne and the consul decline. He takes offense at her suggestion of leaving Mexico, vehemently denying any addiction issues. Yvonne expresses her discontent with the state of the garden and retreats indoors for a bath. Seizing the opportunity, the consul rushes to the nearest cantina for a drink, but stumbles in the road and is unable to regain his footing. Fortunately, another Englishman discovers him before any harm befalls him and offers a sip from his flask. Once back home, the consul attempts, unsuccessfully, to initiate intimacy with Yvonne. Overwhelmed by embarrassment, he relocates to the porch, where he contemplates the majestic Popa Catapetal and Extacuatal volcanoes, eventually drifting into slumber. Hugh, having returned from his trip to Mexico City, dispatches a telegram to London concerning anti-Semitic propaganda in Mexico. He retains a copy of the telegram in his coat, borrowed from the consul. At the consul's residence, Hugh is taken aback by Yvonne's presence, unaware of their divorce. Despite initial coldness between them, Yvonne and Hugh venture into town and secure horses for a ride. As they journey to a cantina, their demeanor warms, and Yvonne discloses the details of their divorce. They engage in a conversation about the consul's battle with alcohol addiction, and Yvonne shares her determination to transport him to Canada. Hugh imparts valuable advice on how to proceed. On their way back, they pause at the dilapidated palace of Emperor Maximilian where Hugh contemplates the breathtaking beauty of the land. The consul awakens to a pounding headache and rushes to the garden, where he discovers a bottle of tequila concealed from Hugh. His attention is drawn to a nearby sign reading, You like this garden? Why is it yours? We evict those who destroy. 135. He contemplates its significance and engages his neighbor, Mr. Quincy, in discussions about the true essence of the Garden of Eden. Dr. Vigil arrives, and he and the consul reminisce about their previous night of heavy drinking. Dr. Vigil's advice to combat the withdrawal-induced tremors plaguing the consul is simple, drink more. As Yvonne and Hugh approach, the consul greets them from a distance. However, he soon finds himself in a bewildering state of blackout, only to awaken in the bathroom, 
realizing he needs to prepare for the group's upcoming excursion to Tomalin. Meanwhile, he was also getting ready for the trip and reflects on his earlier years as a budding song composer and guitar enthusiast. Before his career as a war journalist, he had sold two songs and embarked on a sea voyage to promote them. However, his publisher, Mr. Belowski, had never made an effort to market the songs beyond printing them, leading to Hugh seeking revenge by seducing Mr. Belowski's wife. Yet, his actions resulted in a summons to divorce court and accusations of plagiarism. To his surprise, Mr. Belowski eventually dropped all charges, leaving Hugh's life in disarray. Returning to the present, Hugh is interrupted from his reverie by the consul, who requires assistance with shaving and dressing. They share a heartfelt moment of fraternal support and reminisce about their shared experiences at Cambridge. As Yvonne, Hugh, and the consul venture into town, they encounter Jacques Leruel, with whom Yvonne had an affair, ultimately leading to the dissolution of her marriage to the consul. Jacques invites the trio to his home, and Yvonne takes his arm, while the consul and Hugh lag slightly behind. Hugh observes that the consul appears discontented with this unexpected turn of events. At Jacques' residence, Yvonne implores the consul to depart before Jacques returns with their drinks. However, the consul resists and ventures into Jacques' bedroom, where he encounters a painting illustrating the descent of alcohol users into hell. This depiction startles him, and when Yvonne suggests they explore the Day of the Dead festivities in town, he urges her and Hugh to proceed without him. The consul and Jacques proceed to a nearby cantina, engaging in a heated dispute over the blame for the affair. Jacques insists that the consul's alcohol addiction rendered him so absent from Yvonne's life that her involvement with someone else was inevitable. The consul, inebriated and unsteady, distances himself from Hugh and Yvonne. Meanwhile, Yvonne, Hugh, and the consul board a bus bound for Tomalin. Hugh finds himself seated next to an intoxicated man who impresses him with his peculiar ability to be both highly inebriated and remarkably aware of his surroundings. The consul refers to him as a pelado, a term signifying someone who preys on the poor without needing to be wealthy themselves. The bus abruptly halts as it encounters a man lying in the road. Tied off to the side of the road is the man's horse, marked with a number seven. Yvonne, Hugh, the consul, and the pelado disembark from the bus. The consul prevents Hugh from examining the injured man due to the legal repercussions that bystanders might face if they touch the victim. The pelado eventually removes the man's hat, revealing his mortal wounds. However, no one in the group makes any effort to assist, fearing entanglement in a potentially criminal incident. Soon, a group of vigilante police arrives on the scene. Everyone returns to the bus, where Hugh observes that the pelado has stolen money from the injured man, displaying no intention to conceal it. Hugh contemplates questions of morality as they continue their journey into Tomalin. Upon reaching Tomalin, the trio heads to the arena to witness a bull riding event. While at the bull riding event, Yvonne reflects on her father's struggles and the sacrifices she made to support him. She draws parallels between the consul and her father, both of whom battled alcohol addiction, and realizes that her love for them continues to guide her life. The bull riding show isn't going well, as the bulls are sluggish and uncooperative, moving only slightly despite persistent prodding. To everyone's surprise, Hugh jumps into the ring and begins riding a bull. Watching the spectacle, Yvonne once again proposes that they leave Mexico, and this time, the consul tearfully agrees. They witness Hugh riding his bull until it eventually collapses. Afterward, they exit the arena in search of a drink and some food. Finding themselves at the Salon Ophelia, the consul falls into a deep state of intoxication, only able to grasp fragments of the conversation. These fragments are interspersed with information from a text about Tlaxcala that the consul is reading. As his mind gradually clears, he engages in a heated argument with Hugh about the Spanish Civil War. Accusing Yvonne and Hugh of harboring romantic feelings for each other, the consul insists that their intervention in his drinking stems from selfish motives. He asserts his commitment to self-determination and abruptly leaves the salon. A storm is brewing as Hugh and Yvonne search for the consul, knowing he's likely headed to Parian. They take the longer path with more cantinas in hopes of finding him. Although they don't locate him, they discover a bill and an unfinished poem he had penned at one of the establishments. 
Yvonne becomes deeply worried. As they continue on their path, the storm intensifies, and she hears a distant gunshot. Suddenly, a horse charges at her, trampling her to her death. In her final moments, Yvonne gazes at the stars and envisions her future with the consul in Canada, disintegrating. Meanwhile, the consul has indeed gone to Parian and settles at the Farolito to drown his sorrows in alcohol. Believing that Yvonne has abandoned him, the consul waits for Hugh. During this wait, he drowns his sorrows in heavy drinking and engages in a fleeting encounter with a sex worker. In that moment, he senses a newfound liberation, as if the weight of repairing his relationship with Yvonne has been lifted. However, his reprieve is short-lived as he becomes the target of vigilante police who accuse him of espionage. Wearing Hugh's jacket, which contains a copy of the telegram Hugh sent to London, he finds himself in a perilous situation. The police insist on taking him into custody, and the consul resists, attempting to escape on a horse marked with the number 7, seemingly brought there by the vigilante police. In the ensuing struggle, a gunshot rings out, wounding the consul. The shot startles the horse, causing it to bolt uncontrollably and fatally trample Yvonne in the chaos. As the consul's life slips away, he envisions himself descending into the depths of Popa Catapetal, witnessing immense destruction and turmoil. Following his death, his body is discarded in the ravine behind the Farolito, and a deceased dog is tossed in afterward, marking the grim end of their intertwined fates. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.